I'm waiting for the newspaper editorial that comes out in a couple of days and says, you know, sexual assaults of mentally handicapped women happen all the time in the Magic Valley, and the people who do these things are not always Muslims. And, of course, we understand that. We understand that people behave badly no matter what their backgrounds are. From time to time, people behave badly, and there's always a core of some that can't stop behaving badly. But that's really a straw man argument, because if you bring people here from somewhere else and settle them in your community, and some of them are also people who are capable of doing this, then you just increase the odds for that victim, because you put another predator on the street. And, and that's the part the liberals don't want you to recognize in all of this. I do want to mention Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And I also want to mention our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric. Now, we're in somewhat of a cool period during the middle of this week. It'll warm back up into the 90s this weekend. But these are just little hints that colder weather is coming. And we've been telling you, one of the worst things that you could have happen in your home is not to check out that heating system early. In other words, don't get to that first cold night, go to flip on the heat, and all of a sudden there's nothing there. So you can find someone to come out and take a look at that and make sure everything is running well by giving the pros at Ramsey Heating and Electric a call, the team at Ramsey's will make sure it's done right the first time. Problem-free, cozy winners are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric. They're located at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, and you can call them, the telephone number, 678-0459. That's Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they sell warm winters and cool summers. Fellow arrested, and this has just made Breitbart, which is nationally now and internationally, and the Breitbart writer says, Mohammed Hussein El Eldai, now, you could probably, he, he may not be a Muslim, and he may not be a refugee, and he may not be an immigrant, but perhaps the name hints at some of those things. Facing charges of felony sexual assault of a vulnerable adult for an attack that happened Friday afternoon. Apparently, a woman uh, mentally disabled was out for a walk. She got tired, sat down, or decided to crawl and uh, just to uh, curl up on the sidewalk. He invited her in for a cold drink. Uh, she now claims that uh, he exposed himself and actually held her, at least for a time, hostage in the bedroom. Now, again, there are people who do bad things in this community who were at least culturally raised Christian, or perhaps they have no religious faith, and they come from all different ethnic backgrounds. But if you've got 10 criminals in town, that's a threat. But if you suddenly add 10 more, then the odds of you actually getting involved or being a victim of a crime have increased. And again, the liberals don't want you to recognize that. And they'll keep saying, well, yeah, but not all of these people are bad. Well, you just increase the odds, though, that bad people are coming to this community. And, and, and that's the part that I find to be the worst, uh, worst in all of this, is that you still have folks in denial. Because, again, they aren't threatened by it in their neighborhoods. And they don't care if you are, as long as they get their cut. And I think that's ultimately what this still is coming down to. 947, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. 736-0300, the number to reach the show. You're up next. You know, it always comes down to actually whether or not a person has compassion for his fellow man. Every time I think I've got some sort of a hard thing going in my life, I'll look up or see something and I'll realize this person is in a wheelchair or something. You see, there's always somebody worse off than me. And you see, this lack of compassion from our liberal brethren, or whatever you want to call them, they, they couldn't care less about fellow man. And if it doesn't happen to them, again, I've got nine granddaughters. If, if one of them got raped or sexually assaulted and she was never the same again, how does that affect our lives? You see, I, I had my house robbed once. I felt violated. I felt violated. Can you imagine being raped or yeah. sexually assaulted? You know, one more quick thing, quick. Uh, you know, there's people that feel vic like they're victims, and then there's people that actually do stuff here in this world. There's a very disabled person 
who is Hispanic, who works down at a bur- you know at a burger joint here in Burley, and that kid has never complained once about anything, and he is at the job every day working, and he's happy to have a job, and he's got a good attitude. You see, if everybody was had that kind of an attitude, it would be a great thing, wouldn't it? Thanks, Sh- Bill. Sure would. I thank you much for the call. Uh, that that was the whole uh, notion behind uh, the uh, the order known as Opus Dei in the Roman Catholic Church. Be happy in your work, to try to find God in whatever your work is, and that could be whether you're a corporate CEO or you're the guy mopping the floor. And I got to be honest with you, when I was a young kid and I was working in a hospital kitchen, and we were mopping floors and washing dishes and scrubbing pots and pans, I had a pretty good time. It was some of the happier happier times of my life, just getting to know some of the people I worked with, and uh, uh, you, you just scrubbing pots and pans. You had all the time in the world to think about anything you wanted to. and Just, you know, you got a paycheck for it, too, as well. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story, and you're on News Radio 1310 KLIX. You're up next. Uh, good morning, Bill. Bill, Michael Brown didn't need a gun to rob. He was bigger than most NFL football players. He was belligerently, defiantly walking into the center of the street, and if somebody tooted their horn at him, he could have double-fisted a dent in their hand in the hood of their car, or he could have torn off a mirror. His parents got money and were rewarded. He should, they should have taught him how to walk on a sidewalk. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for the call. And, you know, that's the problem with all of these Black Lives Matter demonstrators and, and, and the others is they tend to lionize these criminals as if somehow they are Nelson Mandela. They are not. There's a huge difference in the uh, in what's a guy. I saw a great video a couple of weeks ago, and the fellow says, "A guy stealing hubcaps out of my garage after he gets arrested and sent to jail. He is not Mandela. Got it? Stop treating him like he is." Nine fifty one. Bill Colley with you on top story on News Radio thirteen ten, KLIX and News Radio thirteen ten dot com. It is fifty nine. This comes from a Middle East Watch or Middle East Forum. A man from Manchester in the United Kingdom has been sentenced to 180 hours of unpaid work and a 12-month community order after posting comments that were said to be grossly offensive toward Muslims. And he did it on the website, or rather the Facebook page, of his local police department. While the Greater Manchester Police refused to disclose the details of the case to Breitbart London, the man is said to have also written, Don't come over to this country and treat it like your own. Britain first. That's according to the Manchester Evening News. The father of seven, whose mother-in-law and sister-in-law are Muslim, was visited at his home at 8 a.m. by police officers who arrested him under the Anti-Free Speech Malicious Communications Act. He is reported to have said to the officers, Is this about the Muslim thing on Facebook? I'm getting locked up for sticking up for my own country? Coming to a land near you. Meanwhile, how about this? Uh, This is from... uh, (laughs) <laughs> this is from the Washington Times, one of my most trusted sources. Let me get to that in just a minute. As long as we're talking about countries that have become effeminate, not only England, but how about France? Consider the Parisian suburb of Valentin. This is from Washington Examiner, which not long ago named a street after the notorious Palestinian terrorist Marwan Bargoudi. Meanwhile, several local French consuls are planning to grant the convicted murderer honorary citizenship. But it gets worse. A campaign has gained momentum in France to nominate Bargoudi for the Nobel Peace Prize and the country that introduced the world to the Age of Enlightenment. Some residents have surrendered their moral authority. Bargoudi founded the Alaska Martyrs Brigade, a brigade, a terrorist organization responsible for the deaths of both Israelis and Palestinians. Some of the group's notable suicide bombings include a January 2002 massacre at a 12-year-old girl's bat mitzvah, killing six and wounding 33. A January 2003 attack at the Tel Aviv Central bus station that killed 2022, and a January 2004 suicide attack on a Jerusalem bus that killed 11 passengers. Europe is now comprised of a nation of panty wastes, or nations of panty wastes. I mean, this is this. They're going to be commemorating in France a guy who kills little girls at their birthday celebrations. The British are locking up people who say, if you come to England, live like the English. I mean, this is insane. This is absolutely insane. I've got this from the Washington Times. CARES cries of Islamophobia. CARES stands for the Council 
on American Islamic relations. And these are people, to call them whiners would be to say uh, an insult to whiners. The writer is a fellow by the name of Eric Rosenman. A vast Islamophobia network is busy marginalizing Muslim Americans. At least that's what the Council on American Islamic Relations would like you to believe. In reality, without reference to the Muslim American community in general, last year the FBI pursued more than 900 active cases, some in each of the 50 states, into suspected Islamic State sympathizers or other potential terrorists. Also, in 2015, 56 individuals across America were arrested on suspicion of plotting on behalf of of or otherwise supporting the Islamic State, as noted by George Washington University's program on extremism. He writes, an out-of-court settlement of a libel suit brought by CARE against a critical website let stand charges that the group was founded by Hamas members, founded by Islamic terrorists, and funded by Hamas. Hamas is the uh, Palestinian Islamic resistance movement at a U.S.-designated terrorist organization. One of the five men sentenced to prison in the Holy Land Foundation case for raising more than $12 million for Hamas, was Ghassan Alashi, co-founder of CARE's Texas chapter. In addition to Alashi, over the years, four of the council lay leaders or staffers have been arrested, convicted, and or deported on weapons of terrorism charges, or terrorism charges. And the list goes on and on. 900 investigations, though, in the calendar year 2014, I believe is what he said, in all 50 states. And you're telling me that we don't have sleeper cells that are sprinkling people throughout our communities? And again, a government willing to turn a, a deaf ear to this. Uh, and I realize that local government has not had any control over this matter. Basically, it runs downhill, and they're getting clobbered with all this stuff. However, you could at least speak out and say no. It's not difficult to do, unless, of course, someone is lining your pockets with campaign cash. I don't know. Or you want to get your picture taken by that, uh, by, by that guy's side, turning a shovel out at uh, a yogurt plant, for instance. Oh, well, we help bring jobs to the Magic Valley. Vote for me. Yeah, but who, who gets those jobs? Well, some of our people get them. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're for sale, then you need to get out of politics. And again, for some of those people who won't appear on this show any longer, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Those are the words of a very famous American president. You can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. We are not your publicity department. You hire people for that on your own. So I just I wanted to share that today, if I could, before we wrapped up the program. Very quickly, speaking of Muslims, one black nationalist in Florida, this comes from Fox 13 in Tampa, uh, this guy has had an, an eye-opener and suddenly finds maybe the police aren't all that bad. Take a listen to this, but listen to his name as well. We're the ones that's having a problem with the police department. He's been vocal about the need for police reform in the city of Tampa and called for an end to black crime. Both concerns hit Ali Muhammad head on early Saturday morning in Ybor City. I was approached by a young black male who just came up to me and said, give me your earring. Held at gunpoint on 8th Avenue on his way home from DJing a club, Muhammad said he had no choice but to comply with the robber. At the time, he didn't take my cell phone. He took my book bag, my earrings. I'm following him. Okay, no, stop. Within minutes of talking to Muhammad, officers were on the hunt. It's an armed robbery. That's a very dangerous situation. We flooded the area. The suspect was arrested and identified as 18-year-old Antoine Robson. According to police, he robbed two other women that night. One lady, she was in tears. She couldn't believe. She said he had the gun in her mouth. Muhammad, who got his laptop, jewelry, and ID back, said he couldn't help but feel gratitude toward the officers. Police could be hostile. And they could be very belligerent. Um, Friday night, I met some cool officers that was about business. In other words, they got his laptop back and they arrested the bad guy. Gosh. Gee, they ain't so bad after all, are they? 958. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. God willing, at the creek don't rise, we get to come back and do this all over again tomorrow morning between 8 and 10 o'clock. Rush Limbaugh will follow the news at 10 from Fox today. Also, Sean Hannity following the news at 1 o'clock from Fox. Glenn Beck after 4 o'clock news. Dave Ramsey tonight at 7. And you know some of these guys are going to be delving into that story about Hillary Clinton and her boyfriend sitting behind her at the rally in Kissimmee, Florida. And while media is burying that, uh, yeah, well, we'll just let them do the talking. Have a great day, folks.